In this little video we're going to be looking at creating coloured gradients and gradient backgrounds on the iPad in Affinity Designer. Now these can be very useful, uh, especially in, in um, creating book covers and things like that. Designs that need a gradient background. We'll begin by creating a linear gradient on a rectangular shape. And in linear gradients, colour transitions flow along a straight line from start to finish, usually in this case left to right. In this example we're going to use a gradient overlay to accomplish our task. You can just use the fill tool on its own, but I want to show you the gradient overlay. So, set up a suitable canvas and place a rectangular object on the canvas. Simple, just draw a rectangle. Launch Affinity Designer, create a document, pick the Rectangle tool and draw out a rectangle to fill the space. Nothing fancy. 1800 by 1350 pixels, that'll do. That's the size of a 6x4 photo. Now, go to the FX toolbar on the right and tap Gradient Overlay. You can switch it on and tap the words Gradient Overlay or just tap on Gradient Overlay. Now, click on the colour swatch and a panel appears letting you choose or change the colours that you use. Now the colour selection process is quite different. You can see when you press on that square colour swatch that says Gradient, in the Gradient panel there will appear two gradient points on the edge of the line across it. They're known as colour stop points. There's one on the left, the dark one, black, and the one on the right, which is the white one. And you can see on the screen, it's showing you black graduated right across to white. Click on the desired colour stop point. We'll start with the left hand one. And on the colour swatch after it, a panel will pop up where you can choose or modify the existing colour. So you click on the little circle, which is now hidden behind that colour image, and then click on the colour panel, the little swatch, the circle there that that big square is pointing to. Hmm, hard to describe. Now you can choose or modify the existing colour. You can use the HSL sliders or the hex sliders if you prefer. So, I've got the HSL sliders up here to start with. And here we'll choose the colours 323 S100 L50. And you can see I've got them in there and it's put a bright pink on the left. Very pretty. And on the other end point, so you click the other end point and you can see it there. It's uh, the, the white circle at the end of that line. Well, it's a, it's a white circle but it's got colour in it. In the endpoint now, in your RGB hex sliders, I've changed it from HSL to RGB. For some reason on my iPad, the colours wouldn't set in the HSL slider. Never mind, just switch to RGB hex slider and type in those numbers. C5, A3, 2, 6. And that's a funny thing with iPad. I'd been doing something else with it, obviously, and something was set in place, and rather than go to all the trouble of clearing it, I just decided to use the RGB hex sliders. Now that's the start and end points of the gradient respectively done. You see it's going from pink right across to an orange. And as I say there, if the HSL sliders don't want to work, change to the hex sliders and use those. It could be a glitch in the app, or it could be just me. Now we can create gradient backgrounds with more than two colours. For that, we need to introduce multi-position colour stops. Tap the plus sign to introduce a colour stop. You can see the plus sign next to the green circle there. Then select, select, tongue-tied, the colour swatch. Using the colour wheel, select a green colour. You'll see the colours change if you rotate the wheel. If you actually rotate that wheel around, you can change the colours that will appear in that centre section. Introduce as many colours as you need by the same method. You can put 
as many dots as you like along that white line and change the colours related to them. But of course you could end up with a big muddy mess. So don't get too carried away. Now that's with only three colour points, left, centre and right, and that's quite pretty. Pink through green to orange, and kind of an orange, orange or yellow. Now, continuing right along with this exercise, let's try it on a different shape. Now for this one, we're not using the gradient overlay. Pick a circle, pick the ellipse tool and drag out a circle holding a finger on the screen, actually holding two fingers on the screen to get a perfect circle. Or set its size in the Transform Studio. You can see that's why I've got the Transform Studio. If you see the dimensions 1220 and 1220 that's a perfect square so the circle inside of course is a perfect circle. So if you have trouble holding your fingers on the iPad screen while you're dragging out a circle, and I know I do, because I've got fairly large fingers. Hmm. So I often find it easier just to set the dimensions for things like this in the Transform tool. Next, pick the Fill tool on the left hand side. Set it to type Linear, and you can see down the bottom there, t Linear Type. Tap on the circle and drag across the area in the direction along which you wish the gradient to flow. And I've got it from top down to bottom right there. The FX gradient overlay is not used in this type. So you can forget that. That was the first exercise. There will appear the start and end points of the gradient on each end of which you can tap and choose colours from the HSL colour wheel in the colour panel. Mm. I could have written that a bit better, it's a bit tongue-tied. So you've got a left circle and a right circle, or a higher one and a lower one there, and you tap on those just the same as the overlay to change colours. Notice the slider between the gradient points. I'll point that out here. You can drag it to manipulate the gradient spread between the colour stop points. So if you want it darker across most of the screen, you drag it down towards the right there. Lighter, drag it up towards the left. The two colours shown are those selected in the colour wheel. The halfway mark is still clearly shown. So you s select the top circle, the top button if you like, top point, and in the colour wheel select blue. Then select the lower point highlight that one so it's slightly larger than it was and select the yellow. And you can see the halfway mark is still shown. Now notice the slider between the gradient points. You can drag it to manipulate the gradient spread between the colour stop points. You can see I've dragged it down to the right and it's dragged the blue halfway across, well more than halfway across the circle. So let's introduce some more colours. Click on the points along the line where you wish to introduce colour stops. The points will appear as dots and there are halfway marks between each one. So you can actually adjust the graduations between the graduations. Click on those colour stops and choose colours from the colour wheel in the colour panel. And you can see I've got a multitude of colours there and too many more and it's going to become quite a muddy exercise. Now, conical gradients. What we've been creating in the above sections were all linear gradients. If you click on the side fill tool and check the type in the context toolbar, you'll see that it's linear. Now, Affinity Designer has options for other types of gradients as well. So let's choose conical and you can see a good example of it there. As you can see a conical gradient resembles a cone when viewed from the top. The colour stops are similar to the sectors of the hands of a clock. They occur along an angle. Three points specify a conical gradient. That dot there is the rotation angle. Where you drag that along the line determines the coverage of that section. 
and the colour stops of course determine the colour. A change of rotation angle and colour stop positions and you can see everything's moved there from the last one. I encourage you to experiment with this. It's, you can create some really interesting designs. The radial gradient is similar to the conical just that the gradient line emerges from the centre of the gradient and you can put your colour points along that and add colours, subtract colours. If you want to remove one of those dots you highlight the dot and click on delete and presto dot and colour are gone. Nature's own gradients. Thank you for watching.